Hello and welcome back to Undefeated. We will be, I guess, finishing off the story now. This is the final update for Undefeated. The final round, if you will. So, if you recall, in the previous round, uh, Xander and Bruce were talking about what they wanted to do or had to do in order to essentially end this torment and they had decided on basically well i guess bruce was more the one that had decided to basically say like you know what i'm done your new champion is xander unfortunately though the commissioner had anticipated this and instead of making this a live fight which they usually were he was um he was going to record it, just in case Bruce decided to actually honor what the commissioner thought was his agreement. And, you know, basically really hurt Xander. But no. He anticipated that something was going to be planned. And right when Bruce decided that he was going to bow out, the security guards came and basically tased the both of them. And they dragged Bruce somewhere else, unfortunately. Afterwards, Xander was escorted back to the elevator, but he demanded to see the commissioner because he knew that this was all the commissioner. Not, it wasn't anything else. It wasn't obviously um, Theodore. Um, so he demanded to be taken to the commissioner's office, and that's where he confronted him and admittedly tried to assault him. But... Um, Apparently, the commissioner is no lightweight, and was able to deal with the deer. But, in doing so, he basically... Um, put himself in more of a... In more trouble. And, as a result, there is now a fight scheduled between Xander and Harvey, a.k.a. the commissioner. And... This is basically the only or the last ditch effort for Xander to, I guess, save himself and hopefully save Redline and Bruce. It was also, um, not discovered, what's the other word? It was also revealed that Harvey had set up the fight between Cole and Redline, so he was con conscious, not conscious, he knew what was going to happen. He knew that Redline was going to be severely beaten. And he knew that Cole was just the right person to do all that damage to poor Redline. So, yeah. You know, he's not a good grandfather. He's, he's a bad person. He's doing this all for money, too. So, yeah. Ah, so now, I guess we're going to see whether or not, you know, Xander is able to defeat the commissioner and we're going to find out what happened to Bruce and we're going to find out what's going to happen to Redline. So yes, let us begin the final round of Undefeated. I'm alone. Bucky. I have to find Bucky. I'll explain everything to him. I'll... Zan? Bucky pops his head out of a nearby viewing room. He looks understandably confused. Where's... What happened? It didn't. Scenes of my fight seared through my brain. Bruce screaming in agony. The burning spot in the middle of my back. The commissioner's face. This should go without saying. But everything we've discussed here is covered by your NDA. Breathe a word of the details and the deal is off. I don't know what to say. I don't know what I'm allowed to say. He left it so vague. Anything I could say could land me in deep shit. Am I supposed to just stay silent? He put me in a position to lie to my coach. But Bucky knows something is going on. What is he expecting? Why am I the one that has to work around all these insane rules? It feels like nothing he says makes sense. I've frozen in place in front of Bucky. 
I already know that it's been a bit too long to be natural. It did in... what? Where's Bruce? I... Staring at the ground, searching for an explanation, and coming up dry. How am I supposed to come up with an explanation for what just happened without breaking my contract? Zan. His hand is on my shoulder. I slow my breathing down. It got cancelled. I already know that he doesn't believe that for a second. I don't believe that for a second. My shoulders raise in an exhausted, half-hearted shrug. Talk to me, Zan. I can't even look him in the eyes. I don't want to lie to you, but I can't tell you the truth. Bucky sighs. Can you at least tell me what happened? If I say anything, he'll fire Bruce. I'll fuck over my future in Redline. Bucky wraps his arms around me. It's kind of cold in this hallway. I guess I've been shivering. I only noticed it now that I have someone warm holding me. Bucky's arms hold me tight and calm my breathing. His hands glide up and down my back, and I can finally catch my breath. Until his hand traces over my back, where the guard held his stun rod against me. I flinch against his touch, and I think he felt how wiry my fur is in that spot. The hug breaks. His eyes meet mine. A combination of fear, concern, and anger mixing on his face. Bucky's thumb and forefinger rub together, thinking. His fist clenches tight. He pats my shoulder. Let's take a walk. I can tell that he's trying to act casual, but his voice is filled with tension. His breathing is heavy, too. We walk briskly towards the immersion chamber. He's silent the whole way through. I almost feel like I'm in trouble. He takes me to the ocean side. There are a few guys here, but they're off drinking on the patio. Bucky takes a slow, deep breath. We watch the ocean for a few seconds. It's a nice view, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, what happened? I want to speak up. But I feel like the cameras and microphones could probably reach this far out. Still nothing? I was hoping that the waves could cover up any sound in case someone's trying to listen in. Let me see if I can work this out then. Did you have your fight with Bruce? I shake my head, slight enough that a camera could probably have trouble seeing it from this distance. So, something else happened. Do you know where Bruce is? I shake my head again. He lets out a sigh. And... You're back. Does it hurt? Another shake. Hmm. Well, that's good. Was the old man involved? The commissioner. I nod. Of course he was. He's really got it out for you, huh? I vigorously nod my head. He chuckles. Yeah, makes sense that you probably can't do much talking then. We stare at the waves for a while. I should feel like I've let him down, but something about his presence makes me know that I've got nothing to be ashamed of. How are you feeling? Tired. Hmm, yeah, I don't blame you. No time to rest. I've got a fight in two days. Oh? With who? I can't say. I just look down. Who? Oh. He pulls his arm around me and pulls me close. Bucky lets out a long, slow sigh, one that sounds more concerned than anything else. That's... big. And talking about it will land you in more trouble. I'm getting tired of nodding. You okay? No. I give in. I don't know what I did wrong. 
It feels like everything's just... rigged. Bucky holds me. I let the tears roll down. We try to do the right thing. Nothing's working. I just want my friends to be okay. He just hugs me tighter. This sucks. I'm so tired. I want to be done. I don't want to fight anymore. I know. But if I don't, Bruce is fucked. And I'm fucked. At Redline. I take a breath. I don't want to think about what will happen if I don't fight. And then I break. Bucky holds me against his chest as I stain it with my tears. Everything rides on this. My future, Bruce's career, Redline's life. It's too much. So all I can do is cry. Poor Bucky. He probably has no idea what to do with me. His students are suffering, and there's so little that he's able to do. I'm sorry. Shh. You're okay. You don't deserve this. He scoffs. What? You're the one that's had to put up with this shit for months. You don't have to worry about me. Sorry. He cradles me against his body as my crying peters out. You remember a few months ago? Before your second fight with Bruce? We stood out here and watched the waves for a bit one morning. Right. You were a different person back then, Xander. A lot has changed. I was a dick. <laughs> I won't say you weren't. But in just a few short months, I watched you get stronger. You opened up not only to me, but to Drayden, to Red and Bruce. I saw your heart change. I saw how you started caring for your friends. How you went out of your way to make sure that they were okay. And even now, you were worried about how I was feeling. You're the one that has a fight coming up. I sniffle. I don't feel like I've earned these compliments. It doesn't feel like much has changed. Change isn't just what happens to you. How you respond to it matters, too. I am so, so proud to have you as my student. I look up to him. He's crying. Smile plastered across his face. No matter what happens, Xander, we'll make it work. We hold each other and let ourselves cry. After a while, we watch the waves in silence. So, two days. Just tomorrow, then the night after that is the fight. Hmm, sounds like we got work to do. Yeah. Of course. I probably don't even need it. I could win the fight here and now if you tried me. A big grin spreads across his face. There's the attitude we need. No clue who this mystery opponent is, but he's got shit luck having to face you. We laugh for a bit, feeling the tension ease. I'm worried for Bruce and Redline, but there's not much that I can do for them right now. Or maybe the best thing that I can do is prepare. If everything is riding on this, then I have to give it everything that I have. Oh shit, wait, you probably need to see Drayden about the thing on your back. Fuck. You're right. Thankfully, Drayden was only a little bit upset. It was hard dancing around the details of what happened to us, but he seemed understanding enough. I get some gel to soothe the spot where I got zapped, along with a stern talking to. Getting Drayden mad at me is almost more upsetting than the whole deal with the commissioner. But he supports me. Not that he has much of a choice at this point, but neither do I. I sleep good that night. I have to. I wake up early the next morning. I've got training to do. We can't take it too hard. I can't risk injuring myself. I have to finish this fight. But we get to work. Running drills, running laps. I slam away at the heavy bag. Reminds me of where I was a few months ago, practicing baby combos on this thing. God, I wasted so much energy being mad at myself, 
All for something that I didn't even do. All about something that I couldn't even control. All of this for a man that doesn't even care whether I live or die. I'll make him regret ever hiring me. The bag shakes and shudders frantically, and I step back, sweat dripping down my frame. I turn, as if I see Redline in its corner, jumping rope at a double pace. Not here. But I can feel him cheering me on, pushing me further, helping my flame grow brighter. When you wake up, Red, I'm gonna have good news for you. But for now... Good! Again! Again. Again! I beat my anger into the bag. My fears, my failures, my rage. There's no point in directing that inward. I don't deserve that. So many people have been working their asses off to help me become a better person. It's my turn to pay them back. There we go. Say some for the fight, Zan. He laughs and claps me on the back. What do you think? You were ready to drop Bruce in your last fight. So whoever this guy is, he's getting carried out on a stretcher. I could hardly sleep that night before my fight, but with everything going on, my body just sort of gave out. Red. Bruce. I'm gonna get us out of here. I got no goddamn idea when they plan on getting me out of here. I've been in this shitty little jail cell for probably a day now, maybe a day and a half. Hardly that much time, but feels like forever since the fight. At least it's giving me a chance to sleep, rest my bones after getting tased. Shame that the bed sucks, but not exactly unexpected. This thing wasn't made for people my size, then again, not many things are. Creaky and lumpy and smells like old people. The cell is damp but bone dry at the same time. Not sure how they did it. Cold, too. Miss my heat lamps. Doesn't help that they didn't bring me a change of clothes. All I've got are my trunks and gloves from fight night. I sigh and lean back, bumping my horns against the cement wall. This sucks. I should have expected them to figure out what we were planning somehow. They always find out. Maybe I should have just handed in my resignation or not shown up at all. There was a million things that I could have done different. We shouldn't have ever gotten to this point. I should have just quit on day one. And now I'm here, Zan's alone, and Red's all kinds of fucked. I really fucked everything up. At least, I have company down here. Though he hasn't shown in a while. Hey, that shithead's gotta be around here somewhere, right? Hello? You around? I don't want to get too close to the bars. I bumped against them on my first night and shocked myself silly. Didn't expect them to be electrified. Not as bad as the stun sticks, but fuck. Probably not great for me to be getting zapped this much. I don't know if the bars are even still live, but I'd rather not take my chances. I know the panel arming them is right outside my cell. I hear footsteps. I hate that I know it's him just by the way he walks. What's up, big guy? Cole. Jackass. He looks so goddamn pleased with himself, twirling a stun stick in his hand, a pair of keys jingles attached to his belt. You got the time? Why does it matter? You're not going anywhere. Just curious. You seriously can't tell? The fuck am I supposed to tell time without a clock or a window? He just laughs at that. They really fucked you up, huh? Not nearly as much as I'll do to you. All I remember is they snuck up on me, tased me, and I woke up here. I definitely thrashed around in the elevator, damn near broke the box, took them all down with me. I think that I've got Gator in these jeans somewhere. Got a few glimpses of the hallways as they dragged me along, but it's all hazy. I do know that we're way deeper than I've ever gone. Hence the musty-ass cage. Cole grunts and leans back against the wall opposite of my cell. Yeah, I saw that. These things do some damage, huh? Fuckass says that with the shittiest grin on his face, 
batting the stun baton into his free hand slowly, almost like he's threatening me with it. I try not to look too upset. You want to find out yourself? Give it here. Think I'll pass on that. I grunt and lean back in bed. So when did you become a cop? Don't know. I think I have to go to school for that. This is just a temporary thing. Oh, mall cop. Even better. He didn't like that one. Fair. In my defense, he is a piece of shit. I'm getting promoted, dude. Gonna be the new champ. Taking your place, Kamish said so. Takes me a second to figure out the implications that has. The old man's gonna try to get this shithead to kill Zan too, huh? Well, damn. Sorry to hear it'll be short-lived. Hmm, what? You think that I'm gonna lose? If it's anything like your last few fights, yeah. You saw me win that one last week, right? My heart drops to the pit of my stomach. He flicks the power on the stun baton and waves it around, almost taunting me. It was a slaughter, man. You should have seen it. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It was great. I hear he's coming back for a rematch. I'll fucking kill you. I'll break your shitty little toy and beat you to death with your own two fucking arms. And breathe out. Cole will get what's coming to him in time. Focus on now. Focus on getting out, getting Zan and Red safe. But yeah, new champ. He flicks a stun rod off and points it at himself. Jackass. I try not to sigh too loud. You know it's bullshit, right? It's not gonna last. Cole looks confused. Already told you, I'm not gonna lose. No, dumbass. The job itself. Commissioner's doing you a solid right now when you need it, but the second that you're not useful, he's gonna turn around and throw you to the wolves. Dude, I am a wolf. Jesus fucking Christ. He's gonna fire you. You're his lapdog right now, and he's gonna keep pushing you to do worse and worse shit. And once you fight back, you're getting fired. Or, or... I gesture to the cell around me. Thrown away. Cole stares blankly, thinking for a few seconds. Okay. Okay. He shrugs. I mean, he told me you'd try spouting some bullshit, but I didn't think that you'd make it that obvious. Dumbass, I'm trying to help you. Sounds like you were trying to get your old job back. If I wanted my job, I wouldn't have just given it up in the ring. I'm just trying to give you some advice. Even though he sure as hell doesn't deserve it. Cole scoffs. Well, even if you were telling the truth, why the fuck should I care? I got mine. Got a nice promotion, a raise, and I get to be the fuck out of little freaks like that yin dude. My body moves on instinct. I'm standing an inch from the bar. Cole prepares, pointing his baton at me and powering it on. There's no helping this depraved fuck. With a huff, I drop back onto the bed. Cole flicks a switch on the baton and turns it off. Whatever, man. Go be his bitch. Don't say that I didn't warn you. But once you go down this road, you're gonna start to feel really fucking grimy. And no amount of cleaning is gonna make you feel good again. Cole rolls his eyes. Yeah, I'll worry about that when I'm rolling in money on the top floor. There's an uncomfortable silence. So what's next? You just gonna sit around watching me sleep? Fuck no. I'm not scheduled overnight. Then what happens tomorrow? Fuck if I know. Old man said something about attitude adjustment for you, but apparently plans changed right after you got here. Changed? From what to what? He's got a fight. Tch. Who? The commissioner? I chuckle to myself. Yeah. The smirk that crept across my face disappears. 
the fuck? He hasn't fought in years. Didn't even think that he could fight at all. But yeah, he says he's gonna fight tonight. Tonight? With who? He laughs. It's that little deer dude that kept challenging you. My heart drops. What? Yeah, dude. He was pissed. Said something about doing Bruce's job for him. I don't remember. He's gonna kill Xander. I couldn't touch the commissioner before. There's no way Xander's surviving this. You gotta let me out. Again, I rise up, coming face to face with Cole through the bars. No shot. His baton flickers back to life. I'm not trying to fuck with you, man. I gotta stop the commish, dude. He's gonna hurt Xander. Fucking good? That's kind of the whole reason you're down here. I slam a fist into the bar without thinking. It stings for a second. Cole! I'm not... Ah. Cole's baton slips through the bars, jabbing me in the abs. It didn't linger for more than a second, but it felt like taking a cannonball at point blank. My body drops and convulses, teeth gritting as I try to force my muscles under control. <laughs> You're so fucking pathetic, dude. No wonder the old man's getting rid of you. Can't even put a lightweight out to save yourself. I'll let you deal with that for a bit. Have fun, dickhead. I lay there, heaving and growling as the pain courses its way through my body. He's fighting tonight, and there's nothing that I can do about it. I'm fucking useless. What the fuck am I doing? I've made it out of worse situations. I'm the goddamn champion. Undefeated. This is no different from any other fight. I'm gonna find a way out, and we'll put an end to all of this. So... This mystery fight... Am I allowed to watch? I never really thought about that. Probably not. Unless you know which arena it's located in. I do not. And there wasn't any sort of official broadcast announced. Security cameras, maybe? He thinks for a second and smiles. Can't say that I know how to get into those, but we'll give it a shot. Appreciate it. Feels like this elevator is taking forever to come up. Bucky puts a hand on my shoulder. Breathe. You're gonna do great. I smile and nod. Thanks. And this time, I actually believe him. I'm stronger now. Stronger than I was for every other fight before this. It helps that Harvey's much closer to my size than Bruce is, too. Even though Bruce said that he lost to him before. The old man's had to have gotten weaker since then. The elevator doors open. I take a breath. Part of me doesn't want to step inside. Once I do, the doors are going to close, and when they close, that'll be it. Do or die time. I don't want to die. And let that breath go. I turn around, wrapping my arms around Bucky. He seems surprised for a second then hugs me even tighter. Thank you for everything. You're the one that's been putting in the work, Xander. Thank you for letting me be your coach. We hug for what feels a little bit too long, but I don't care. I need this. I step onto the elevator and get one more look at Bucky. Knock him dead. I'll make you proud. The door closes. Just me and the attendant. Doing alright? And just going through a lot. Sounds like you've been busy. I was the elevator guy before your first fight. Oh, right, I remember you. Good to see you're not nervous anymore. Well, maybe not entirely. He laughs. Well, at least you've calmed down a bit. You were dead serious last I saw you. It's... been a rough few months. The attendant nods and looks down at his tablet. I try not to ask too many questions, but um... How did you end up with all... this? 
He gestures to his tablet with the information on it. I can't exactly give any details. Fair enough. You feel good? About the fight? Just in general. I think so. Even if I lose, I'll figure something out. That's a good attitude to have, then. We reach the bottom and the doors open. The lights are already on. Just, um, whatever happens, we're rooting for you. We? Maybe the rest of the staff? The look that he's giving is anxious, confident, hopeful. I nod and step out with a smile. I'll do everything that I can. Good luck. The doors close. I'm alone, basking under the lights. My stomach doesn't hurt, not in the way that it did before. I'm ready for you, Harvey. Right on time, his door opens up and he steps out. I'm not sure what I expected underneath this suit, but he certainly seems more prepared for the fight than I was thinking. He approaches the ring, looking frustrated. Old piece of shit, you don't deserve to be angry. Good to see you've made it. I trust you didn't leak any more details. I know what would have happened if I did. Smarter than you seem. Clearly not wise, though, given that you followed through on the fight. He tilts his head to either side, emitting loud pops from his old joints. Whenever you're ready. I'll finish what Bruce couldn't. Don't talk about Bruce like that. He knew what he was doing. Bruce was too scared to fight against you. I'll do it for him. The commissioner steps forward. And after a deep breath, I do too. The buzzer rings. We raise our fists. His guard is high. Clearly he's got some Muay Thai training. Stand-up fighting could be a problem. I might stand a chance if I can get him on the ground. He's heavier than me, though. I don't know if I want to gamble on that. I'll see if I can outbox him. But if it comes to it, we can always grapple. I extend my glove to tap. Force of habit, I guess. He does, too. Bad idea. He gets a hold of my hand and pulls me forward, swinging a hook for my jaw. I manage to duck under it, only for him to step in closer with two more jabs to my face. My gloves pull up just in time to eat the shots. If I can just... Mm. Harvey lands a kick against my side. I stagger back, hoping to get some distance to breathe. He's fast. I'm starting to doubt he's as old as I was thinking. The kick left a bit of a sting against my ribs. I don't think that I can take many of those. Again, my opponent moves in. No time to think. Just act. Harvey's lead leg kicks out low. I step back, letting it miss. That evasion makes my stance wobbly. It'd be unwise to put myself in a bad position, so I rebalance myself with another step back. The edge of the ring is approaching. Harvey is as well, closing in as I move backwards. He sends a jab that barely misses along with another leg kick. As I attempt to block the kick, his elbow breaks through my guard and cuts across my face. My guard immediately tightens around my snout. <sighs> Fists rain in from every direction. I try to duck, bob, weave, block, anything to get out. I can't bring myself to move back any further, so I move forward. Air shoots through my gritted teeth as his knee pierces my abs. Desperate, I push, hoping to circle out, but with a firm grip, he pulls me down into another knee. I manage to defend, but the force behind it is enough to do plenty of damage to my arms. In the struggle, I get a hold of his knee before he pulls it back down. One pick of the knee is all it takes to make him scared. I've got my head pressed against his chest and I can feel him tense up immediately. An arm hooks over me and in no time at all, he manages to break my takedown attempt, shoving me away. I'll take it, an unsuccessful takedown, but I've learned that he really does not want to go to the ground. All I have to do is survive until I can get him there. My cheek tightens, I touch it and find blood dribbling down through my fur. The elbow must have done some damage. It's not too bad though, I can still fight. Push through the sting, keep my heart pumping, 
Once the adrenaline dies down, then I can worry. But not now. Harvey's walking towards me, calm, the same deadly expression on his face. I try to match it, but I don't know if it has the same effect. Probably not. I'm really missing Bruce's teasing right about now. I pull my guard up, and he does the same. He starts the offensive, firing jabs for my face. With enough distance, there's no problem evading them, but I need to start firing back. His stance is strong, but his midsection is wide open. If I can start chopping away at his body, I'll be in a good place. A straight punch comes from my face, blowing right over my head as I duck. I stand my ground and send a combo to his body, finishing with an uppercut to his chin. The blows to his body land, but my uppercut misses and before I can react, a knee lands against my body. I fold forward, spitting air out and trying to defend, but the blows keep coming. Punches rain down again, plowing into my guard. Each one stings against my skin and the force quickly tears through my stamina. I'm getting back to the edge again. Harvey's size and speed make quick work as I turtle forward, scrambling to find an out. A knee pierces into my body again. I step back, but I know that I'm outside the ring. Maybe I can sneak to the side. <laughs> again, the knee plows into me, finding its mark in my solar plexus. I can feel my limbs try to go limp, but not before Harvey gets a hold under my arm. Whoosh. He leaps up, firing a knee aiming for my chin. My gloves block the way, but the sheer force behind it is enough to shake me. Harvey hisses, this time pulling my head down into the strike. Not sure how, but the knee slips through my hands, finding its mark against my nose. Feels like something breaks. I lose myself for a moment. My head feels heavy, and I can't seem to get my body to cooperate. It all feels kind of fuzzy. He tries for another kick, I think. My guard holds it at bay, but just barely. Blood sprays off as my gloves slam back into me. I can't let him get another one in. With a clearer mind, I get a hold of his knee before he pulls it back down. Again, he goes to defend it, but I act too fast, turning to the side and throwing the old man to the ground. But with the grip that he had on my arms, I don't exactly get the advantage that I was hoping for. He pulls me down, but in the heat of the moment, I manage to slip through his arms and fall back onto my ass. He scrambles to mount me, and I stumble back to make space. He was ready for me to take him down, and I don't know if I want to get on top when he has a hold of me. So I opt to get to my feet instead. He rises to looking more annoyed than he was before. I really need a second to catch my breath. My nose is bleeding bad clogging my snout, forcing me to breathe with my mouth open. That just gives him an easier target if he swings for my jaw. Doesn't matter, Harvey's moving in. I smear the blood across my arm and sip in some air. He's much more aggressive now. I guess the takedown pissed him off. Blows rain into my face. It's a lot harder to avoid them now. Everything feels heavy, sluggish. I'm blocking more often than dodging, which only makes my body ache more. I manage to send a few good shots back in retaliation, but through the pain, he only doubles his output. Everything I give him, he gives back twice as hard. I work his body, he abuses mine, I touch his chin, he makes my snout even worse off. I'm starting to see blood paint the cement beneath us. Can't focus on that, I have to deal with Harvey's relentless assault. One step forward, two steps back. One clean blow, two in return. It's like he's punishing me for fighting back. A running theme, I guess. But the fight goes on. He's starting to sweat, but his expression barely changes even when I land a good hit. Just gotta keep fighting. Maybe I can bait out a kick and punish him for it, or take him down and finish it. He comes in with more punches, and in a bit of desperation, I chin up with him. He's hot panting slowly as our exhausted bodies press against each other. Gotta position my legs properly, otherwise he can trip me and take me down. I was hoping that he'd need a break as much as I do, but he's clearly doing much better than I am. I can't think like that. I can still win this. With a huff, he shoves me back. Guess my break is over. I start to go in for an attack, but his leg lifts, body turning to aim a kick. I lean back, letting the kick pass a hair's length from my snout. 
The whiplash makes me flinch, shutting my eyes for a split second as my body returns to its place. Everything goes fuzzy. Blood sprays as my head cracks to the side, followed shortly by the rest of my body. It's been a while. Zan's probably having his fight right about now. And I'm stuck down here, waiting for whatever punishment the old man wants to throw at me. As if getting shocked ain't enough. Bored as hell. Nervous as fuck. Guess it'd be asking too much to have a radio or something playing. It did give me plenty of time to think about everything. So I guess they got what they wanted out of me. Rehabilitation works. But I'm kind of over sitting around and thinking about what I've done. I've spent too much time feeling sorry for the shitty choices that I made. I need to take action. I gotta take responsibility. Xander's fight. Redline's injuries. It all happened because I wouldn't stand up to Harvey. So, first step, getting out of the cell. Maybe I should try calling out again. Call. No response. I need the bathroom. You got a toilet in there. He's still in the other room, judging from how far away he sounds. Shit's busted. Just hold it. Till fucking when? I hear a sigh followed by heavy footsteps approaching. Here comes the annoying part. I fold my arms over my chest, hiding my hands and my armpits. Just pray that he doesn't notice that I'm not wearing my gloves. What do you mean it's busted? I mean it's busted. I flushed it earlier and it didn't fill back up. Flush it now. Fuck. I didn't expect him to think about it. Figured that he'd just open the door and come in. I turn around and flush it with my foot. Sure enough, it works fine, and it looked like a jackass. Cole just snorts and walks away. Hold up. What? I'm gonna miss the start of your little boyfriend's fight. Fuck. Okay. Guess I don't have any time to waste. I wanna watch. He raises an eyebrow. You sure that's smart? The old man's gonna put him in the hospital. Probably worse than I did his little boyfriend. <laughs> swallow your pride, swallow your rage. Focus on what needs to be done now. Anyways, the answer's no. See ya. Wait. He sighs and steps closer to the cage, stun baton resting over his shoulder. Dumb fuck probably thinks that he looks real cool. Swallow your pride, Bruce. I wanted to apologize. He grins. Yeah? What for? I suck in air through my gritted teeth. For embarrassing you in the cafeteria. Hmm. What else? Bastards enjoying this. And... Just being an asshole? I'm guessing at this point, no fucking clue what he wants out of me. Yeah, you were a piece of shit, huh? Yup. I sure was. At least with that one, I wasn't lying. I've been a real mess for a while. Glad you can finally admit it. He starts to walk away. I was really hoping that it didn't have to come to this. I wanted to get your attention. Cole stops. Ugh. See, now I should have seen that one coming a mile away. I was chill having a friend be gay and all that, just as long as he didn't start coming on to me. So, was all that posturing you were doing to the runs just, like, to get me jealous? Swallow your fucking pride and play along. Yep. Just wanted to get your attention. He laughs. That's fucking hilarious. Oh man, that's great. You only hung around those freaks just to get to me? I mean, 
I'd never swing that way in a million fucking years, but you had me fooled. I thought you actually liked those little faggots. My hands clenched tight. Fuck. Swallowing. I told them all about the nasty fucking fantasies I had about you. But after Red told me how small your dick was... Hard fucking pass. He clenches his baton. Keep pushing it. Said mine was way bigger too. You're fucking sick, you know that? I thought you were one of the good ones. Nope. I'm a dirty fucking faggot. I fight better than you. I fuck better than you. And I'll always be better than you. I'm just making shit up at this point. But I can see he's getting angry. So I gotta keep it up? Someone else is here. I can see their shadow along the wall. Just barely. I think I can make out the shape. Bucky? Cole hears something and starts to turn towards Bucky. I have to distract him. I'm just saying. It feels pretty fucking good knowing that I'll always be at the top. No matter how many wins you get, you'll never be as good as me. A filthy fucking cocksucker. He turned back around, death in his eyes. Stun baton already prepared. He jabs it through the bars, aiming for my chest. I catch the tip of the baton in my hands. Before cold came by, I put my gloves on backwards. The padding of the gloves, now covering my palms, provides enough insulation to keep me from getting shocked. The fuck? Brah! With both of us holding onto the baton, I pull as hard as I can. Good. Cole slams into the bars, howling out as electricity sears across his body. The wolf convulses and screams, eventually letting the baton drop to the ground. His eyes shoot open and he looks ready to murder me. Fucking! He can't seem to muster any more words. The drool on his lips starts to bubble. Maybe I went a little overboard. Cole lunges for the baton. Before he can get there, Bucky behind him, forcing him back into a tight chokehold. Howdy. You're the guy that fought my red, right? I think I owe you a little something. He maneuvers Cole with no problem at all, smashing the wolf's face into the concrete wall behind him. Blood erupts from his snout, his eyes crossing into a daze. He maneuvers Cole with no problem at all, smashing the wolf's face into the concrete wall behind them. Blood erupts from his snout, his eyes crossing in a daze. Bucky rears the fist back, then smears it across Cole's face, creating a brutal crunch that I never could have expected from the old man. Cole nearly limps at this point, alternating between struggling with the rue and reaching for the baton on the ground. Bucky stomps onto the tool, smashing it in two. Hey now! We don't need none of that. Men like us only need our fists, right? Natural order. Survival of the fittest and all that. The way he talks gritting his teeth like that kind of freaks me out. I've been angry, but this is a whole nother level. Cole's getting choked out. Bucky's hold is clearly taking a toll on the concussed wolf. It doesn't take more than a few seconds for Cole to go completely unconscious. Bucky drops in unceremoniously. With a little growl, he shakes out his hand. Should have brought my gloves. Hmm. <laughs> that hurt. I'd lend you mine. But, um... The padding on the gloves completely melted away. Might as well just toss them. Why'd you come here? Wouldn't want you to miss Sanders' fight, would I? Bucky taps against the lock panel next to my door, and after a few seconds, it clicks open. Should have brought a change of clothes for you two. It's cold down here. Well, we won't be here for long. What should we do with... Um... I gesture to Cole, who's starting to stir. Bucky sighs and drags him into the cell. That'll do for now. I'm not done with him, but I imagine Red will have a better idea for a punishment once he's up and running. You know the way out? Barely. I've never been this deep before. How the fuck did you even find me? Ah, uh, that'd be me. The doctor's voice coughs out of the walkie-talkie strapped to Bucky's pants. He holds it up, looking proud. 
Drayden here snagged a walkie-talkie from one of the guards. I asked for one. For security purposes. Also... And I snagged one off one of the guards. He's been guiding me around the halls. He knows a place that well? I was able to find a map of the holding cells after digging through some of the files. Um, but uh... Alright, we can walk and listen at the same time. Let's go. We start moving down the hallway, but Drayden speaks up before we can get another step further. Yeah, so um... Two problems. Bucky and I stop in our tracks. Firstly, they've got guards headed your way. Cole wasn't responding his walkie for a bit, so they're coming down to check on him. Manageable. And the second? Yeah, so, um, Redline's missing. I hit the ground. I'm supposed to be fighting. What hit me? Fuck, this hurts. I'm on the ground. I'm still bleeding, but, uh... Out of instinct, I back up, shuffling on my backside as fast as I can. The concrete scrapes against my skin. I've got a migraine, feels like. What hit me? At least I can breathe now, my nose clear of blood for only a few seconds. As I move, I can make out the shape of the commissioner. He kicked me and... then I got hit? My guess is he followed his spinning roundhouse into a tornado kick? I can hear my heart pounding away in my skull. Fuck. Right, the fight. My body moves without thinking, thankfully. Harvey's kick needed time to recover, so he can't follow up. He was probably banking on it putting me out cold. It almost did. I'm surprised. Should have broken it. It feels like it might have. I don't want to give him the satisfaction, though. He approaches, glaring blades straight through me. You think too much. You should have done your thinking before you got down here. What does he mean by that? I look down and realize that I'm barely outside the ring. I have to get back in before time runs out. I step forward, but the commissioner shoots out a teep kick. His foot lands flat in my chest, and the force sends me a few steps backwards. In hindsight, you shouldn't have taken the fight at all. You're not ready. Circling around him doesn't help. He's standing at the edge, tracking my every movement. The exhaustion is weighing down on me already. As soon as I get close enough, he fires a volley of fists for my face. They clash into my guard, but another teep kick sends me onto my ass. He spits out a laugh. But I suppose you should have thought about that before you swung for me. Enraged, exhausted, I charge in, planting a foot inside the circle. His knee fires up like a piston, breaking through any defenses and folding my midsection. I pull away, but he holds me in place. Weak. Pathetic. Insubordinate. The knee plows deeper and deeper into my solar plexus. Any oxygen, any energy, any fight that I have left is beaten out through my core. I pray for this to end. Another knee, this time smashing into my snout. I can't react. I have nothing left. Harvey lets a vile snarl escape, brutalizing my face with one more knee. He lets my limp body collapse to the floor. I'm bleeding a lot. This hurts. Everything hurts. I breathe out with a gargle of blood. He's probably going to kill me. I don't want to die. Please. I want to see Red one more time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was such a bad son, Dad. I'm sorry I was such a bad friend, Red. I'm sorry I was such a bad fighter, Harvey. When the ringing in my ear subsides, I can hear the commissioner mumble something. Did you hear, Did you hear me? me? I told, I you, told to you to get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. He wants to keep this going. Sure. I might as well listen. Maybe he'll let me live. Somehow, through some sheer force of will, my foot plants itself on the ground. Slowly, I come to standing, face to face with the blurry double vision of the commissioner. I know that I'm off balance. I know that I can barely breathe right. I know I'm not winning this. I got beat bad. I need to go to the hospital. 
I have to find a new job. I have to pay off all the contract fees. What a fucking waste. Maybe I should have just quit. You're a disgrace, Alex. I can't look him in the eye. Never should have wasted the time or money on you. I know. I know. Fang will be better off without you. Redline will be too. Don't look at me like that. At least try to look strong for the cameras. I am strong. Come on now, put your hands up. Make it look like you're worth fighting. I am worth fighting. I deserve to win more than you do. You're quiet. No more outbursts? Maybe you finally learned your place. Fuck this. My place is above you. I have fought too fucking hard to still end up at square one. Harvey takes a fighting stance inches away from me. Well, either way, goodbye, Alex. Enough. My overhead crashes into Harvey's snout. He tried throwing us straight and I slipped under it. I refuse to let you speak to me like this. Harvey's nose breaks, blood loosening from his snout. Let's see if I can break that jaw too. Time resumes and the old man is guarding up, but not before I whip hook into his cheek. Grr. He's staggering to the side, clearly dazed or at least a little bit surprised. I waste no time following up, chasing him to wherever he tries to stand. You won't get away from me. You brought this on yourself. His fist shoots out, but some kind of sixth sense is carrying me. I flow around them pivoting on my feet to punish every opening he gives me. Jab to the chest. Hook to the ribs. Uppercut to keep his mouth closed. I can't waste any more time feeling sorry for myself. And I will never let anyone treat me like that again. Because I'm going to fight until my dying breath. You. His stance is broken by a well-placed knee to the center of his torso. I know that look on his face. I felt the wind get knocked out of me plenty of times. With desperate pause, he grapples for my knee, probably trying to take me to the ground. If I can just grab hold of his head, I stomp down, freeing my leg from his grasp. I pull down on his head, leaping up with a knee to meet his snout halfway. Grah! I feel bone and cartilage crumble over the force of my knee. Harvey's frame shudders and his arms go limp. His legs are shaking. The both of us hit the ground, with me tackling him down and mounting his frame. His gloves move up to guard his face, but they're easy obstacles to move. Blows rain down on his face. Everything hurts, but I fight through the pain. Not just because I have to, because I want to. I want to win. I want to live. And if I have to fight to make that happen, I'll fight every fucking day. I'll fight for myself. For Bruce. For Bucky and Drayden. For Redline. For every person slated to be broken in this useless, toxic, endless fucking cycle. And I won't stop fighting until I win. One last hammer fist and the commissioner's arms go limp. His eyes close. He's still breathing, but there's no other movement from him. The fight is over. I won. Holy shit, I won. I was waiting for a bell or a buzzer or something or... Fuck. I won. My legs find the strength to lift my body up to a standing position and I raise a fist, basking in the glory. What the hell is that sound? And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Yes, I know there's plenty more and you want to, you know, see what's going to happen. I mean, obviously, Xander was able to defeat the commissioner. And Bruce apparently has some help in escaping the cell. Um... But is everything all right? Because apparently, you know, we still haven't seen what happened to Redline. What's going on with that? And how did a Bucky show up? Hmm? 
Aww. Um. What else? What else? Thankfully, Xander was able to, I guess, in a few words, tell Bucky what was happening so, you know, he could have the support from his coach um, in what would be an otherwise incredibly difficult um, situation where it's like, well, he has to train, he has to prepare himself to defeat um, the commissioner, but at the same time, it's like, well, how is he gonna go about doing all these things? He has to... Uh, he has the weight of... Um, of everyone on his shoulders, but luckily he was able to defeat the commissioner. Or was he? Um, and yeah, Bruce is out, hopefully. Um, nothing's going to stop him and Bucky. Wink, wink. Um, but yeah, you know, there's still a lot more to, to see. This was basically, according to Resolve, this is 2 hours, 12 minutes, 30 seconds. So you still have an hour and 12 minutes worth, well, uh, like maybe like 10 minutes of those is just me rambling at the end like the, for the outro, but still. Um, but yeah, so, you know, look forward to that. And write down in the comments what you think so far. Are you happy that Xander was able to defeat the commissioner? Do you think the commissioner is down for the count? Do you think Bruce is going to make it in time? Do you think everything's going to go peachy? Do you think Redline is safe? You know, write it down in the comments and thank you all for watching slash listening if you would like to play undefeated yourself you can do so by going down into the link in the description where there will be a direct link for the itch.io page where you can download the game and play it or you can just go to itch.io and download it from there and if you feel so inclined to donate to leo you know for this wonderful visual novel um you can do so when you go to download the game it gives you the option to pay for the game and donate to the game so you can donate through there that's what i ended up doing um and he doesn't have a patreon or anything like that so yeah but i have a coffee in case you guys have forgot you can also become a channel member or you can you know donate to my throne you know it's it's there you know just in case you feel so inclined and have disposable income which i know many of us do not anymore but yeah you know whatever i'm just playing it out there uh but yeah so i guess that's it for now and i will see you guys in the next video Bye bye